A young man walks through the forest, running his hands across the different tops of bushes and along the bark of the trees that line his path. In the distance, he can hear the soft, bubbling brook of a nearby stream, and a smile plays across his lips as he feels the serene, gentle nature all around him, a beautiful and calming place. His intense contemplation of nature, however, is shattered as he hears a large crack and the pained howl of an animal nearby. Immediately, he leaps to action, climbing one of the trees and beginning to dart from treetop to treetop, trying to get to the sound of wherever this has occurred. Soon, he comes across a clearing and sees that there is an animal, a small fox, with its leg caught in what looks like a brand new bear trap. Soon, he sees three men, humans, entering the clearing, with weapons on their side, looking to see if they can kill whatever their trap has caught. Eh, it's just a fox. One of them speaks as he draws his sword. Don't worry, I'll get rid of it. He's not worth anything. Quickly, a snarl grows on the lips of the man hiding in the trees as he sees this occur. It's one thing to hunt animals in order to be able to survive. It's another to do so simply because you've decided that you will intrude upon their territory and harm them. He lets out a soft, low whistle sounding very similar to that of a bird's, though it does catch the men's attention as they begin looking around to see what is occurring. His whistle calls upon the different animals of the forest, and he summons them, conjuring them to do what they must in order to protect the small, harmed creature. Without warning, suddenly animals come tearing out of the forest. Bears, wolves, even different bucks and deers come to chase these men off. Immediately they begin to flee, shouting at the top of their lungs in order to be able to escape and let the others nearby know that there is danger. In a moment, they're gone. The stampeding animals have left, and the guardian of nature slowly climbs out of the tree in order to be able to release the fox. Go now, little one. Share the words with the others. I protect you. This forest is mine to live within and share. Druids are an interesting class in D&D 5th edition as they fill this sort of role as another spellcaster, but one that's entirely focused on nothing more than nature magic. And a lot of times I think the way that the D&D community views them is very skewed because there's a little bit of a disconnect between some of their abilities. See, the main shtick of the druid is they're essentially a wizard who has gained their spellcasting from simply being attuned to nature and being able to manipulate rather than the laws of physics, more so the laws of nature. Many of their spells are concentration based and mainly focused around dealing large amounts of damage or causing a huge effect to happen that shakes the earth itself. And a lot of the times their spells can feel a little, well, overwhelming. Call lightning and tangle and many others just cause this visceral effect that makes you feel like when a druid shows up on a battlefield, you should be terrified. And yet, despite these awesome abilities and spells that they have, most of the time they get sort of reduced down to just having wild shape. I mean, it is a very unique ability, don't get me wrong. The ability to be able to turn into animals is something that no other class really gets outside of the spell Polymorph, which works very differently. But that being said, Wild Shape is not that powerful of a feature unless specifically you are playing the Circle of the Moon Druid. But a lot of people just reduce druids down to a wizard who could turn into animals. I don't think that's true, and I think their space in D&D is really fascinating and an incredibly awesome one. I want to talk about the Guardians of Nature and the Controllers of the Earth itself. I want to talk about druids. So let's talk about that. When I take a look at a druid, oftentimes what I see is somebody who has very powerful and potent control magic that they are able to use to manipulate the battlefield in an awesomely powerful way. Because at the end of the day, the druid is a full spellcaster and is one of their main class features, just like the wizard, the cleric, or the bard. But it's interesting when looking at all of them because a lot of the full spellcasters don't tend to have their own specific niche. Sure, a cleric has some healing spells, but there's a lot of overlap with the others. Bard is all over the place, and Wizard just has this wide array of very different spells, but the Druid? The Druid does have a niche, and it's nature magic. They're almost entirely focused on that. They could be amazing healers, amazing damage dealers, amazing supports or utility, but it's all based in nature, which I think is really interesting. To me, honestly, I feel like the Druid has the most identity out of any of the full casters. Save maybe Warlock, because Warlock is very unique in its quote-unquote full casting. And it's that very theme of nature magic that kind of compounds into their wild shape feature. And for those of you who don't know, wild shape is a feature that allows you to turn into smaller CR creatures, provided you have a charge for it. And because this is such a unique feature, even though it is not that powerful, a lot of people just attribute this to the druid. Somebody could be casting spells and okay, they're just a spellcaster, but as soon as they turn into an animal, oh, you know that's a druid. And none of the other full spellcasters have a feature that is this unique. Bard has bardic inspiration, but that's not quite as visceral as turning into an animal. Wizards just cast spells. They have a lot of stuff that can sort of manipulate the spells that they cast based off their subclass, 
but their main class features don't give them anything that really denote them as a wizard. And clerics, I mean, they do have channel divinity, which is pretty cool. But again, none of those features have such a visceral and obvious effect as turning into an animal. You can channel divinity and people might wonder if you casted a new spell. You can bardic inspiration and people might just think that you're a really supportive dude. And as a wizard, any of the spells that you cast from your book could be a wizard, but it could also just be another form of something. But when somebody turns into an animal and you know it wasn't polymorph cast, you know this person is a druid. So I think that's why Wild Shape is often attributed to druid so much and why it shares so much of its identity. But what's really cool about druid is there's so much more to its identity than just Wild Shape. Its spell selection alone is amazing. And then there are the different abilities that you can get from your subclasses. Druid is really one of those classes that really shines when you pick your subclass. They don't get a lot of abilities on their own, but their subclasses really define what they can do, especially some of the newer subclasses, which give you the ability to use your wild shape for something other than turning into an animal. Circle of Spores lets you become this sort of spore-encrusted warrior. Circle of Fire lets you summon up a fire elemental instead of wild shaping. Circle of Stars allows you to form a starry form and lets you emulate the very power of the cosmos themselves. So a lot of the subclasses are really, really freaking cool, and I love them a lot, but it makes it difficult to talk about why you should play a druid, because at the end of the day, sometimes I wonder if I should be talking more about why you should play these different druid subclasses. But I guess that is one of the main reasons to play the druid, the amazing subclasses that they have. So I guess that leads me to the question, what makes the subclasses so awesome? Well, they have really cool features, but for me at least, it's specifically how cool they are because they emulate different aspects of nature. For example, take a look at the Circle of Wildfire. Circle of Wildfire is so unique because when you think about druids, we think about them protecting nature, keeping things alive. But Circle of Wildfire is all about burning things to the ground. And that's because wildfires are a part of nature. Nature, just as much as it grows and creates, it burns down and destroys. And a Circle of Wildfire is meant to be a part of that circle of life. <laughs> Or how about Circle of Stars? When we think about nature, we don't think about the sky above us that much, but it is. What is one of the best things about going out into nature? Being able to see all those stars above you, and the Circle of Stars emulates that perfectly. Or how about the Circle of the Shepherd? Much about nature is protecting and guiding and leading animals. And the Circle of the Shepherd emulates this by allowing you to summon up different creature avatars in order to be able to shepherd those around you. There are not a lot of druid circles right now, but all of them emulate different forms of nature, different aspects of it, and I think that is really cool. So while the initial core class of druid honestly does not get a lot of features and does not leave me a lot to talk about of why you should play a druid, the subclasses do, and they are amazing at letting you feel like you are emulating a portion of nature, and that is really what druids are. And that's the other thing I think I find fascinating about them and why you should really want to play them is druids are not really tied to any sort of alignment. Nature itself is neutral and chaotic. And I really think that a lot of the druids are meant to emulate that in some ways. Thou nature art my goddess. So when you're looking to play a druid, it's really fun because you are not just playing a character, you're playing the embodiment of an aspect of the world around you. And that can really inform your roleplay in really, really cool ways. Are you a circle of dreams, which means that the connection that you have to nature is the different paths that lead to different worlds and your understanding of them? Or are you a circle of spores, which means you are emulating the point of life where life can come from death as spores overtake what has died? It's so interesting to me, and I think it is really, really fun to be able to play this portion of nature itself. When you play a druid, you are an aspect of the world around you. You are a literal force of nature, and you are powerful. You get to go out and be something that cannot be ignored. You get to be something that has been here for all time. Even if your character is not that old, nature is, and you're emulating that. You are emulating one of the core characteristics of the world around you, and you are intrinsically tied to it. And that is really, really cool. So go out and play a druid, you beautiful bastards. Go out into the world and make it your own. Never forget to have a great day, and never forget to play a role. Thank you. Come again.